Today I'm here with my February wrap up for 2019. I ended up reading 28 books this month so I'm splitting my wrap ups into four different parts. So this is part three so without further ado let us get started. So the first book that I read I'm actually gonna have a full review up on my channel at some point because I have a lot of thoughts on it so I'm not gonna go into huge details on it right now but it is The Wish Granter by CJ Redwin and I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved it. This follows Thad and Ari who are are the bastard children of the king. When their mother is murdered and the entire royal family is mysteriously killed, Thad finds himself the heir to the throne. Ari has never wanted to be royalty but then she finds herself being trained by Thad to take his place on the throne. She soon realizes that the wish granter Alistair Teague is behind Thad becoming the new king. As time goes on Ari decides that she is going to free Thad from his arrangements with the wish granter and so she enlists the help of the new weapons master named Sebastian. Ari needs to find a way to defeat Alistair before he is able to claims Thad's soul and it's basically the story of that but as I said I'm not gonna go into huge detail right now because the full review will be up soon. Ari is by far my favorite character she's so unapologetically herself and just so funny and the banter that she has with Sebastian is just so adorable. It's a retelling of Rumpelstiltskin which as you guys know I am a sucker for fairy tale retellings. I've never read a Rumpelstiltskin retelling so I was super keen to dive into this and I'm definitely glad that I did because it's definitely a really good story. The next book that I have is Kate White's Hush and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It was very average for me. It follows a woman named Lake who's in the middle of a custody battle for her children with her ex and that's when she decides to have a one night stand with a doctor that works for a company that she was hired for and he ends up being murdered while she's still in his bed and it's basically the story of trying to figure out who murdered him. I found the writing of this book to be very chunky, nothing flowed really easily which was very distracting when I was trying to read the book. I also just really hated the main character. All of her decisions really infuriated me. Like I understand that you're worried about losing your children but when you wake up beside a dead body you should probably call the police but no she just runs away and pretends that she has no idea who this doctor is like everybody saw you with him girl it's gonna come out I'm just saying I was just honestly bored for pretty much the entire book the ending was what really brought my attention back because I definitely didn't see the twist coming which is why I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars instead of the 2 out of 5 stars I was originally going to do because y'all know I hate being able to see the ending of a book but I did not see this one so that was like the only redeeming quality of it. The next book I have I also really enjoyed. I thought it was super cute. It's Five Ways to Fall by K.A. Tucker and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. After her failed marriage, Reese McKay decides to take a trip with her friends to Cancun in order to have some sort of distraction and that's when she meets a bouncer named Ben. After an embarrassing one night stand with Ben, she flies home and decides that she's going to put the past behind her and forget about that experience. But then Ben ends up walking into her stepfather's law firm as the newest hire. As time goes on and they grow closer together, they need to keep their new relationship a secret or else risk them losing their jobs. And it's like the story of that kind of thing. So it's like kind of a forbidden romance situation also enemies to lovers but also friends to lovers it's just a big mix of all the tropes i love so i was here for it i devoured this book in one day i could not put it down i loved it so much it's just so lighthearted and fun but it also focuses on some very deep topics as well. It's heavily focused on family dynamics, which I really liked reading about. I really liked the dual point of view between Reese and Ben. I loved both of their characters a lot. I liked Reese more. 
I think she is so feisty and witty. The banter that she and Ben have is just so fun and I really loved reading them together. Also, she has purple hair, so obviously she has a special place in my heart. Like I said before, I did like Ben, but significantly less than Reese's point of view. A lot of his chapters were just describing Reese's body and how hot she was, so it got old very quickly. But once I got past the obnoxious commentary every couple of seconds, he's also very fun-loving and he is a good match for Reese. Like I said before, I'm a huge sucker for the very obvious romance tropes. I love friends to lovers, I love enemies to lovers, I love forbidden romance, I love fake relationship tropes, and this had all of it, so I was here for it. I loved the slow build romance between Ben and Reese, and it was just so nice to see them grow not only together but also apart as individuals and learn to like forgive and forget their past and all that jazz. I was here for it. This book is really good. Definitely recommend if you guys are looking for like a fluffy contemporary new adult kind of thing is a good one. The next book I have I was not the biggest fan of. It's Until Friday Night by Abby Glines and I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars. It kind of pissed me off at times. It follows Wes Ashby who is a football star and he's struggling with coming to terms with the fact that his father has cancer so he lashes out at other people and treats everybody around him very poorly. Then he meets Maggie who has her own demons from her past. Many Many years ago she watched her father brutally murder her mother and she hasn't uttered a word since and that's when an unlikely bond forms between Maggie and Wes and they become the support system they've both been looking for. So like I said, I wasn't exactly the biggest fan of this book. I think that the relationship that formed between Wes and Maggie was very unhealthy and just not a good situation for either of them. Wes was very possessive of Maggie. He would get mad when she was just talking to other boys which gave me like flashbacks bags of my past unhealthy relationships and it just made me a little uncomfortable so I was like here for Maggie being like girl run away run away like at one point he got jealous of her talking to her cousin like it's her cousin bitch like what mm -hmm. what like, mm, calm yourself. I also just hated all the slut shaming in this book. It seemed like all the female characters were literally in the story just to be bitchy and sex objects to the football players and I just was not here for it. The only redeeming quality of this book for me was the parental figures in it. The relationship between West's parents was just adorable like that is a healthy relationship. West, you need to take after your father and your mother. Thank you. The next book I have is The Midnight Dress by Karen Foxley and I was not a fan. I give it one out of five stars. The book follows Rosie who moves to the town of Lenora with her father who is an alcoholic. She never expects to stay long, especially not long enough to be part of the Harvest Day Parade. Then she meets a girl named Pearl who ends up convincing her to get a dress from the local rumored witch her name is Edie Baker and together they make this dress of a deep midnight blue and that results in one of the girls going missing and it's like the story of that. This book was incredibly boring in my opinion. Nothing really happened throughout the entire thing and I was just frustrated for most of it. The only parts that I did like were the prologues at the beginning of each chapter. It was like the investigation of the missing girl. That was the only thing that caught my attention. Everything in between I was like, okay, I just want to know about the missing girl. Like, mm -hmm move on. I didn't connect to any of the characters. I didn't care what happened to any of them. I'm kind of confused because the book has a lot of positive reviews on Goodreads, so maybe I just read it at the wrong time or something because a lot of people love this book but just was not my cup of tea so it'll be in the next unhaul video you see most likely so stay tuned for that. The next book I have is Dreamland and this is by Robert L. Anderson and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Odea who has always followed the three rules of dream walking, never interfere, never be seen, and never walk the same dream twice. She has always been told by her mother that if she breaks any of these three rules, then the monsters will be able to find them. Dea and her mother Miriam are constantly moving towns so that they can avoid these 
these monsters. But then she meets a boy named Connor and she ends up breaking all three of these rules, unleashing the monsters. I think that the concept of this book was very intriguing. It drew me in and I loved the creepy atmosphere that the dream world provided. The beginning of the story definitely pulled me in. I wanted to know more about the dream world and I really wanted to know more about Connor's past. However, the middle and the ending of the book definitely disappointed me. I was left wanting more. I was never not entertained while reading. I really liked Dea's character and following her through her walks, but I feel like the world building was definitely lacking on that aspect. I think that Connor was a good love interest for Dea, and I was intrigued with his story, trying to figure out his past and the murder mystery behind it. I definitely think that Gollum, Dea's best friend, was my favorite character though. She was very fun-loving and just super adorable and I wish there was more of her in it. But overall, I did enjoy the book while I was reading it. It was entertaining and real spooky, so I was here for it. And the final book that I'm going to be talking about for this part of the wrap-up is The Call and this is by Pedar O'Gillian. The book follows a group of children from Ireland who have been training since a very young age for their turn at the call. At some point they will awaken alone and naked in a strange foreign land. A horn will sound which signals the beginning of the call and the Sid who are these cruel types of fairies will hunt them down in order to kill and torture them. Once called, the children must survive for three minutes in the Grey Lands, which is equivalent to 24 hours our time, and if they are able to do this, the Cid will send them home as a one of the survivors. Everyone underestimates our main character, Nessa, and she is determined to prove them wrong and survive the call. The book is definitely fast-paced. It keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time because you want to know what's going to happen to these kids. It's definitely very gory and violent, so if that's something that you're iffy on, go into the book with caution. I personally really loved Nessa as a main character. She was just so determined to prove everybody wrong. Even though she had this physical disability, she didn't want to be treated any differently. I just loved watching her push harder than everybody else, and she was just so feisty, and it was just really nice to see. I didn't give this a higher rating because I think that the romance was very unnecessary, in it. I think it would have been a lot better if it was just left out completely. It seemed like it was just thrown in there to say that there was a romance in the book. I also was a little bit iffy on the writing style, but I eventually got used to it so it didn't bother me too much. But yeah, overall, super creepy read. I'm definitely intrigued for the sequel and to see where these characters go next, so I'm looking forward to finding a copy of that. Alright guys, so that was my February wrap-up part 3. Check out parts 1 and 2 and check out part 4 whenever it is up next. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!